Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. Tarzan is in charge of an expedition organized to search for the lost scientist Brian Gregory. The party consists of young Gregory's father and a sister, Helen, Magra, a mysterious Eurasian woman, and Wolf and Larson, two hunters. Seeking adventure with Tarzan is his old friend, Lieutenant Darnell. Atan Tome and his confederate task, because of a remarkable resemblance, believe Tarzan to be Brian Gregory, and that he has a map showing the location of the forbidden city of Asher, where is hidden an enormous gem known as the Father of Diamonds. Atan Tome and Lal Tosk are following the Gregory party. During their first night in camp, a native runs amok and Tarzan subdues him, then swings off into the trees to return clad only in a leopard skin. He overhears Wolf threatening Magra and drops to the jungle floor behind the German. Wolf whirls, his hand streaks to the gun at his hip and... It was close, Wolf, but you're too slow. Mein Gott, Kuhn, don't break my arm. Why did you try to shoot me? Well, I... I thought you was going to kill me. Tarzan! Tarzan! Yes, Dino. It's all right. Listen, Wolf, I'm not going to tell the others the truth about this, but don't try it again. You, Wolf... What you been doing here? Well, we thought you had gone to bed. I, 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 uh, I just... Wolf's uh, eyesight isn't as good as it might be. Oh, well, Lieutenant Darno, what is the matter? Nothing, Miss Helen. In the dark, Wolf mistook me for Sheeta. Yeah, 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 that's, that's right. I, I heard that leopard, and, and I came out here, and, <clears throat> well, uh, Tarzan told you of my error. To err is human, Wolf. To forgive, hmm, <laughs> divine. Yeah, sure. But they know a better one than that. <laughs> early to bed and early to rise. Yes, and... Larson. We'll be on the trail at sunrise, and you people must get some sleep. Yeah. Above the jungle chorus of the night and beneath the winking stars comes the faint, far-off call of Numa as he settles upon his kill. The jungle stands throbbing under the soft, velvet sky. A thousand weird, mysterious voices floating out on the night. The camp is wrapped in deep slumber. All excepting Darnell. The Frenchman tosses wakefully upon his cot. Ah, uh, sacre bleu. I, I cannot sleep. What's the matter, Darnell? I cannot sleep. And the fault, it is yours. My fault? Yes. That was a pretty story you told us about Wolf mistaking you for an animal. I saw him rubbing his arm as though it pained him. I saw you pick up his gun and give it to him. Why did you shield him? You know why we agreed to take Magra with us? Because of her connection with Atan Tong. And so we could watch her. You remember the note you got on the boat the other night and lost? Of course. But how does that concern Wolf? You didn't lose that note. Wolf stole it. Hmm. I might have thought of that. But how could I'll he... i beside the point. When I went to find Magra tonight, you know I went through the trees toward the edge of camp. I found her just inside the boma talking to Wolf. <laughs> And so? I heard him threaten to expose her to Tom unless she does as Wolf says. When I dropped to the ground behind him, he tried to shoot me. Yeah, and I can guess what followed. You took his gun away and made his trying to kill you look like an accident. But why? I am certain now that Wolf is working with Tom. I want him with us for the same reason we agreed to take Magra, to watch him. It me, I law? When Wolf accused Magra of writing that note you got, she didn't deny it. <laughs> she knew it would have been useless. I'm not sure of Magra. She appears to be under Tom's orders, yet she warns us against both. What do you think? Me? I do not know what to think. 
To me, Magra is a mystery. She is a beautiful woman, and beautiful women are usually dangerous. Ellen Gregory is very beautiful. We may. That is entirely a different matter. Yes, yes, of course. Well, go to sleep, Donald. We'll know all about Wolf, Tom, and Magra sometime. Good night. Uh, bon nuit. Back along the dark reaches of the Congo River and far from the camp of Tarzan, the little riverboat carrying Atan Tom and Lal Tast to Bonga in the wake of the Gregory party churns its way slowly sluggish waters of the great river. On the after deck, their cigarette ends alternately glowing and fading in the darkness, Tom and Lal Tosk are seated in deck chairs, quietly smoking. <laughs> that fellow sounds hungry. Uh, lions appear to be always hungry. Uh, all wild things in the jungle are hungry, Lal Tusk, especially at night. It's their hour to hunt. It is not always the wild things of the jungle, Master, who hunt. You mean? Uh, we, you and I, stalk Brian Gregory to find Tuin Baka, our share, father of diamonds. Yes. <laughs> the father of diamonds. Once you spoke of a weird legend in connection with the gem. The fabric woven with threads of superstition. Nevertheless, it is a queer story. Uh, some of it is quite plausible, most of it beyond the possibility of reason. Where did you hear the tale? I read it in Brian Gregory's diary. The story, as told to him by Mukumbo, the Hosa witch doctor whom he befriended, was brought down to this country centuries ago by a band of Egyptian sun worshippers. And the diamond? Hmm. These people, Hesiherians they call themselves, are said to have in their possession an enormous gem known as the Father of Diamonds. This stone contains allegedly a strange power the control of which is known only to the Hesiherian rulers and their priests. A power? I do not understand. The power to hold those who touch the diamond itself in a mummy-like state of suspended animation. By the Lord Buddha! Which may be overcome, as the story goes, only through the performance of a certain ritualistic ceremony. And you wish to possess this stone of evil? Do you not fear its influence, Master? <laughs> uh, you are a true Oriental, Altask, steeped in superstition from birth. If the city of our share actually exists, we will probably find it to be merely a secret shrine surrounded by a band of ignorant natives living in mud huts. Whoever originated this fanciful tale to give away the curious. And yet. I feel that evil will befall us in our search for this devil stone. <laughs> if the legendary gem is only one half the size it is said to be, we shall one day be rich. But this evil power, it is said to contain... A story manufactured out of whole cloth. Superstition, I tell you, which does not impress me. No, I'll ask. If the diamond exists and we find it, I shall take it. A slight puff of wind sways the morning haze, lace-edged with the dawn light, and twines it into symbols of mystery, as the Gregory expedition, headed by Larson, takes the day's trek into the jungle. Following close behind Larson are Helen, her father, and Magra, Bringing up the rear of the long, slow-moving column of bearers is Wolf. Near the center of the file, Tarzan and Darno continue their discussion of the night before. Is it not surprising, mon ami, how cordial Wolf is this morning? Not to me. He's like all the Termagani of his type. He hides his true thoughts behind a mask of good humor. But he must realize that some of us know you covered up his mistake of last night. If he does, he is also clever enough to conceal it. Back there at the end of the column, he will have plenty of time to grumble to himself. And perhaps plan. Plan? How do you mean? Oh, c'est pas. But rest assured, mon vieux, we have not heard the last of his ill nature. Uh, nothing to worry about. Bien. He is with us. Do you know why? Tom must be the answer to that. Certainement. 
But why has Tom placed him in our safari or bribed him, which we may assume he did, once he was hired by Monsieur Gregory? I wish I could answer that. Ah, ça c'est bien simple. Tom believes you to be Brown Gregory. He thinks you have a map showing the location of this so-called forbidden city of Asher. Hello? Wolf after the map? Is that what you mean? That would seem to be the logical answer, n'est-ce pas? We are almost positive that is the reason for Magras being with us. As far as Wolf is concerned, perhaps you're right. But Magra? I'm not so sure. Why did she warn you against Wolf? Why did she entice you into that hotel room in Lovango? I tell you, Tarzan, oh, I can... Oh, Oh, why are you so very serious? You two look as though the question of life and death itself rests on your shoulders. What's the secret? Oh, there is no secret, Mademoiselle Hélène. Tarzan and I were merely discussing the uh, object of our expedition, the possibility of finding your brother or trace of him on the... The, the... map which you have, Miss Helen. The Ellen. map? Oh, yes. I only hope it's somewhere near accurate. Have you spoken to anyone about it? Uh, shown it to anyone other than Darno and me? Why, no. I hadn't thought it necessary. I suggest you say nothing about it to anyone. Keep it with you on your person. Is it as important as all that? Well, Tarzan asks you to keep it with you so that that we may examine it from time to time to check our direction, our progress, and so forth. Oh, very well. When we go into camp tonight, I'll get it out of my bag and keep it with me. Bien, yeah, mademoiselle. And now, what do you think of the jungle by this time? No, oh, I love it. I wouldn't have missed this trip for anything. Out of Africa, always something new... It's certainly a true saying. Oui, mademoiselle, it is very apropos. But I suppose the jungle is more or less commonplace to you, Tarzan, having spent so much of your life in it. The jungle is never commonplace. If it were, I wouldn't be here. The jungle is my home. That is the only thing about your jungle I don't appreciate. The wild beasts. I'm not really afraid of them, but they do make me nervous when they roar like that. There's nothing to be afraid of. Well, perhaps not. But it sounds so, so terribly savage. It makes my flesh creep. Numa is only curious. He is coming to look us over. Satisfied that we mean him no harm, he will go on about his business, unless he is hungry. Mm, nevertheless, I wouldn't care particularly to wander off from the safari, as Magra insists on doing. Magra? Has she left the column? Oh, she just wandered off into a little clearing over there. She went after some wild plums, I think. Numa is angry. He is stalking his prey. Go to the head of the column, you two, and stay there. I'm going after Margaret. A hundred yards to the right of the long file of bearers in a little clearing, Margaret stands beneath a wild plum tree. All unaware of the great beast crouching at the edge of the jungle, she calmly proceeds to fill her sun helmet with the luscious fruit. Numa, angry at the approach of man, his mortal enemy, snarls deep in his throat. He gathers himself for the charge. At the low sound, Magra turns to look directly into the glaring yellow eyes of the lion. With a deafening roar, Numa hurls himself to the attack. 